Hello. In this video I'm going to demonstrate a method that I have used successfully for transferring an image onto a piece of wood. In a recent woodworking project, which you can also find on our YouTube channel, I built a serving tray out of reclaimed wood. It's this finished tray that I'm going to transfer an image onto. The image I'm going to use is this black and white illustration from Alice's Adventures in Wonderland. Due to its age, this image is now out of copyright and in the public domain. The first thing I do is scan the image into my computer. I then spend some time tidying up the image and turning it into a true monochrome image. I then flip the artwork because when I print it onto the wood, the image will be reversed. I printed the image using a laser printer. If you only have an inkjet printer there are options and I'll talk about them later, but this method is for using a laser print. I spend some time ensuring that I'm getting the picture in the middle and then mark up the corners of the paper for reference. There are many methods of transferring an image using a gel medium, but I'm going to use a standard Mod Podge. This is the Mod Podge mat. Using a foam brush, I liberally apply the Mod Podge across the printed image. I want to ensure that every part of the image is covered. The paper I've printed the image onto is a standard laser printer or photocopying paper that's not particularly heavyweight. Now I mentioned this was using a laser printer. There are methods using an inkjet printer and often those advise using a transparent acetate instead of paper to transfer onto. There are plenty of videos on YouTube showing this method. Alternatively, you could take your inkjet printout and have it photocopied. This produces the same kind of print as a laser printer. I ensure every last bit of the image is covered. I want the Mod Podge to be fairly thick and evenly spread, and I want to avoid any large concentrations of excess amounts. The foam brush helps with this. I start by lining up one end. I take a bit of time to get the paper in position. If I don't press down too hard I can easily lift and reposition several times. When I have one edge in position I'll slowly work along the length of the print smoothing with a paper towel as I go to make sure I don't get any air bubbles. You have to be quite gentle here as a Mod Podge can make the paper quite soggy and prone to tearing. Once I'm happy I will leave this for 24 hours to dry. The glue may appear dry to the touch after 15 or 20 minutes, but it takes a good day at least for it to be fully cured and ready to work with for the next stage. So once dry I have some warm water and a scouring sponge. This is a type of sponge which is slightly abrasive but it is designed for using on non-stick pans, so it's not too rough. The first thing I do is squeeze a decent amount of water onto the paper. The aim here is to saturate the paper completely. Rubbing the paper helps to work in the water. It also starts to abrade the paper, because the mission here is to remove the paper backing and leave the image and dried Mod Podge behind. I work around the paper, 
scrubbing as I go. I'm being quite gentle as I don't want to make any sudden tears and I also don't want to abrade the image itself. As the paper starts to get wet it will start to bobble up. Here we can see at the edge the paper has started completely dissolving. It can then be rubbed away with the fingers or with the sponge. It can be quite a lengthy process but it's worth persevering with and not trying to rush too much. Using this method you can apply a full colour picture such as a photograph but I'm using a black and white sketch here as I think it's most sympathetic to the job. I alternate between sponging on more water and using my fingers to abrade the paper. There are many alternative methods for transferring an image to wood. Some use simple PVA glue and some a specialist gel medium. Some methods would require you to apply the glue to the paper and some to the job. The method I'm demonstrating is one I've had success with. But I'd recommend you experiment with a few different methods and find out which one works best for you. I'll keep working away until all of the paper has been removed. And just pay some special attention to the edges of the image. Now here it still looks like there's a white background but this is because the Mod Podge has taken on some of the water. After it dries it's a lot clearer. Although you can see there is a slight discrepancy between where the Mod Podge is and the rest of the wood. To combat this I'm going to paint a thin layer of Mod Podge across the rest of the base of the tray. Once dried we can see there's a complete uniform coverage and no discrepancy in the colouring at all. I leave all this to dry for at least another day. I can then apply a protective finish. Here I'm using a spray on acrylic varnish. I'll put several layers of this on, sanding between each. And here's the finished tray. Thank you for watching the video, I hope you enjoyed it. Please subscribe to our channel for more craft and woodworking projects.